John Winthrop Speaks on Liberty. We account him a good servant who breaks not his covenant. The covenant between you and us is the oath you have taken of us, which is to this purpose, that we shall govern you and judge your causes by the rules of God's laws and our own, according to our best skill. When you agree with a workman to build you a ship or house, etc., he undertakes as well for his skill as his faithfulness, for it is his profession, and you pay him for both. But when you call one to be a magistrate, he doth not profess nor undertake to have sufficient skill for that office, nor can you furnish him with gifts, etc. Therefore you must run the hazard of his skill and ability. But if he fails in faithfulness, which by his oath he is bound unto, that he must answer for. There is a twofold liberty, natural, I mean as our nature is now corrupt, and civil or federal. The first is common to man with beasts and other creatures. By this, man, as he stands in relation to man simply, hath liberty to do what he lists. It is a liberty to evil as well as to good. This liberty is incompatible and inconsistent with authority, and cannot endure the least restraint of the most just authority. The exercise and maintaining of this liberty makes men grow more evil, and in time to be worse than brute beasts. Omne sumes licentia deteriores. This is the great enemy of truth and peace, that wild beast which all of the ordinances of God are bent against, to restrain and subdue it. The other kind of liberty I call civil or federal it may also be termed moral in reference to the covenant between God and man in the moral in reference of the covenant between God and man in the moral law and the politic covenants and constitutions among men themselves. This liberty is the proper end and object of authority and cannot subsist without it. And it is a liberty to that only which is good, just, and honest. This liberty you are to stand for, with the hazard, not only of your good, but of your lives, if need be. Whatsoever crosseth this is not authority, but a distemper thereof. This liberty is maintained in exercise in a way of subjection to authority. It is the same kind of liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. The woman's own choice makes such a man her husband, yet, being so chosen, he is her lord and she is to be subject to him, yet in a way of liberty, not of bondage. And a true wife accounts her subjection in honor and freedom, and would not think her condition safe and free, but in her subjection to her husband's authority. Such is the liberty of the church under the authority of Christ, her king and husband. His yoke is so easy and sweet to her as a bride's ornaments, and if through forwardness or wantonness, etc., she shake it off at any time, she is at no rest in her spirit until she take it up again, and whether her Lord smiles upon her and embraceth her in his arms, or whether he frowns or rebukes or smites her, she apprehends the sweetness of his love in all, and is refreshed, supported, and instructed by every such dispensation of his authority over her. On the other side, ye know who they are that complain of this yoke and say, Let us break their bands, etc., we will not have this man rule over us. Even so, brethren, it will be between you and your magistrates. If you stand for your natural corrupt liberties, and will do what is good in your own eyes, you will not endure the least weight of authority, but will murmur and oppose, and be always striving to shake off that yoke. But if you will be satisfied to enjoy such civil and lawful liberties, such as Christ allows you, then you will quietly and cheerfully submit unto that authority which is set over you, and all the administrations of it, for your good. Wherein, if we fail at any time, we hope that we shall be willing, by God's assistance, to hearken to good advice from any of you, or in any other way of God. So shall your liberties be preserved, in upholding the honor and power of authority amongst you.